always a privilege and a pleasure when I'm given an opportunity to share a word from God to all of us, including myself. And uh, today's lovely friends, this is indeed a pleasure to bring this word. And as I got the instruction from our shepherd, I reflected on what happened in a previous, previous chapter. He had given me the two readings that he liked me to focus on, but then I, in my study, my reflection, and I went backwards. They said, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a great morning. And we're going to wait now to hear what God is saying to all of us. So this morning, this is just a child of standing here and just standing in the camp to bring the word of God has made on my heart. I want to crucify self and I want to project Jesus. This is not it's about self, it's all about Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we adore you. that 
believer saved by grace. The free gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that nothing we have done would allow us to claim this salvation. It has been reported that there are over 600 uh, individual commandments in the Old Testament laws. Not just the Ten Commandments that are handed to Moses. You will read the book of Leviticus and read the number of the books throughout the scripture. And you discover there are many laws that we, brothers and sisters, just would be able to bear all of this. Right? Much less to observe them. We don't even remember these 600 laws. We remember the Ten Commandments. But all these numbers of laws that are scattered across scripture in the Old Testament, we cannot. Right? Paul also pointed out that Abraham was justified by faith long before the law was given to Moses. It's about 430 years later that the law was given to Moses and Mount Sinai. But before that, Abraham was justified by faith. Remember the story of Abraham and his journey to the land of the north. Right. And this brings us to the theme of the Holy Sermon of God to report the Holy Spirit has made at my heart. Reaffirming who I dedicate belonging. The apostle in the final chapter of the book of Galatians wrote to the believers in the Galatian church, and by extension, he's also writing to us believers in Grace Baptist Church. That once we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. Savior, we are no all part of the body of Jesus Christ. We belong to Jesus. And we sing this popular chorus sometimes, I'm not my own, yet. Yeah? Are they grateful if we enjoy it and say, I'm not my own, I belong to Jesus. You know that part of me, but we know the words. I'm not my own. the 
then they have asked themselves, this would be a better place, a much better place. However, in the scripture, Paul also reminds us that ultimately, in the final analysis, every man will have to bear his burden when he stands before the judgment seat of Christ. So we have to bear one another's burden. But we must understand that all of man will have to face the judgment. Both great and small. And we have to give an account of our stewardship in this life. And we have to understand that God will judge us as to whether we have been bearing other people's burden. Rev gave us the little keyword, you before me. And that's what God was going to ask when he's judging us. But it was you before me. And the next thing I have to touch on was the case of the teaching brethren. The Apostle Paul exalted the believers of the church in Galatia, and he's also exalted all of us believers in Grace Baptist Church. That we should let him that is taught in the word communicate unto them who teach you in all good things. In other words, we have a duty to build up one another. Those of us who are literate, more than other brethren, who are able to read better than others. And we must not just read for ourselves, but we must share the gospel, share the word, encourage, teach others within the household of faith. Right? I have a study held here every Wednesday. I have been talking, but I am still studying the Bible. But the word of God, so we all to study the word. Study the word so we can be approved, right? If we study the word when we appear before that great white soul judgment, the peace of Christ, we will be able to have a good report. That's what Paul is exalting the Christians to do in Galatia. And he's exalting us to do today to study the word. Um, just to digress a bit, over the past weeks, adults of this will have been looking at the environment. And the Asia is where I work. And one of the the call uh is that the call word is that environmental sustainability is our responsibility, how we work here. But I didn't realize that it's scriptural that all of us are stewards of the environment. And the first place we read was in Genesis telling us that we are environmental stewards that we should value nature's gift as, this, as the environment that God has given us. That we should realize that because we have not been following the scripture and we have digressed that the environment is our filter. That's why we have some of the prolonged droughts, hurricanes, etc. But that we have a two kind of responsibility to help to bring back this. All of the scripture I took the Bible book to work my workplace last week and shared with the Dr. Clark, who is the head of the environmental department. He didn't realize that all of what he has been sharing with the country was scriptural. And my brothers and sisters, if we had been studying the word, we would have realized that we are all stewards of the environment. And so, secondly, you know, really, I'm this word to the church in Galatia, Galatia 6. The new life should be lived as stewardship. Paul reminds us that the new life is a stewardship, and if we think otherwise, we are only deceiving ourselves. As we cannot fool God, God is not mocked according to scripture this morning, and whatsoever we sow, that shall we reap. So if we sow far in our heart, don't expect to reap. Whatever man sow, that's what they reap. If you sow in the flesh, 